All right. Uh, this is State of Mind. And I'm very proud to say we've reached 100,000. You guys all know this by now, but it's the first time with who I have here today that the plaque's here. So here we go. Um, if you know me, you know that I'm a big American Idol fan. I've been watching every year. I mean, every, every show. And this last one, there was two, I call them artists, that made me cry because uh, they were so uh, incredible. And what I did was I contacted both of them, and both of them said they would do State of Mind. And I'm so grateful, and I'm honored because I love talent. And here we are, Aiden Boyer. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, man. Damn, I can't believe you're here. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here either. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, no problem. So what I like to do here is um, just get to know you a little bit. Like, where'd you grow up? Where were you born? Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in Long Beach, but I've lived in Lake Forest in South Orange County uh, since I was three. Uh, so I'm South Orange County uh, raised. And you have a brother, right? Eh? I'm an only child. Oh, you're the only child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do not uh. have any siblings. My dog is the closest thing to my sibling. <laughs> I've had her for most of my life. So. And, and your mother is an actress, am I right? Uh, she's a former stage actress. Okay. Uh, she, she's now a fourth grade teacher. Oh, wow. And you're now a teacher too? Yeah, I'm a teacher as well. Uh, I, I teach at my old high school. So uh, how, how do you like that? How do you like teaching? Oh, I, I, well, I like to think that this school that I went to saved my life in many ways. So just to be able to come back to it and, and be able to give back to my high school is, is wonderful. Happy to carry the spirit of the school with me. I can't imagine anything more gratifying yeah. than teaching other kids. How old are they? Are they? These are high schoolers. High so schoolers. later high schoolers, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I mean, the gratification of this is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing because uh, 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 I'm fresh out of college, too. So I actually worked with a lot of the people who are current seniors when they were in seventh grade, and I was a senior. Oh, so yeah. So I worked with them as seventh graders uh, when they were in the middle school choir, and I conducted them. I arranged uh, This Is Me from The Greatest Showman uh, for the choir, uh, and I had a blast, and now I'm teaching some of them. So it's, it's wild. Met many people uh, at this high school just know me as Aiden, and so I don't exactly force them to call me Mr. Boyer or anything like that. <laughs> Mr. Aiden is what I t typically right, go right. by. I'm, yeah. st I'm still young, so. <laughs> so let's start from, uh, I want to know so much about autism. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I don't know if you know anything about me. Uh, I've been talking on mental health for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I'm bipolar. Mm -hmm. Um. And it is a struggle, but I'm so proud of being bipolar because it's made me who I am, made me be able to be an actor, have this show, write a book. So, you know, what about you? Now, you, you're not born with autism. How's that? How, do you, you're born with it? So, yeah, uh, everybody is born with autism. Uh, for a lot of people... Uh, uh, it's not readily apparent until the, around the age of 18 months or two years. Uh -huh. uh, my family knew something was up with me immediately uh, after I was born. So they... Uh, How did they know? So They just knew that I wasn't developing typically. Oh. Uh, I wasn't hitting all the typical milestones. Uh, I, I had, uh, for example, I had speech, normal, uh, r uh, typical speech development rate, but uh, I could not communicate through it so I would just repeat words all the time um, I was in my own world and I had no idea on how to reference other people or communicate by any means so every form of uh, what we deem today as effective communication had to be manually taught to me through years of intensive therapy uh, and I was diagnosed with autism at age two uh, and uh and uh, basically every aspect of communication throughout my life was all based off of what was manually taught to me. Pe 
many people, um, even those who are who are on the spectrum or maybe diagnosed later, uh, know how to reference other people. And as far as communication, they are born with the ability to watch other people and learn from these other people on how to communicate. I had none of that. So I had to have therapy that taught me how to reference other people and how to communicate uh, effectively. Very difficult for you to communicate and socially, right? Yes. Yeah, I've had social struggles my whole life, um, uh, although I'm very lucky now to be in a position where I have a lot of friends. I, I think I it's because I'm one of the luckiest people in the world, and I'm surrounded by so many uh, incredible people. Um, and I have... I have the arts to thank for that. You know, I was severely bullied as a child. Yeah, people, man. People called me names, had uh, people threw stuff at me. Teachers <sighs> bullied me, uh, abused their power in front of me, humiliated me. Um, I have a lot of trauma from that, uh, but uh, come middle school, when, when I attended this special school, which I now teach at, uh, I was able to flourish, and I was able to be myself, and I was able to hone in on my art a lot more. And uh, I, I think that uh, that was probably one of the big kickstarts that um, to, to my ultimate success in life, and I owe it to the school. So when you were, uh, say, two, three, four, you started singing? Is that, how did that, did your did, did, did parents hear you had great pitch or something was... Different. So, so my parents uh, discovered that I had absolute pitch or perfect pitch, rather, um, uh, which is when you're able to identify the pitch of any sound you hear. Uh, so I had toy keyboards growing up, like plastic keyboards, light up keyboards, and I. Uh, my parents always tell me one day I was uh, hitting one of our metal bowls with a spoon. It was either a bowl or a mug, something, some sort of silverware, hitting it with a spoon, and I said. Oh, that's a G, or oh, that's no, a G, or that's a D, uh, and my parents supposedly freaked out, and I kind of have a slight recollection of my parents kind of freaking out over this thing. But and how me, old were you that that I was about three. Oh my, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was about three years old when my family discovered I had perfect pitch, and I, um, and I, I just remember not understanding why they were freaking out. I mean. Well, one, I didn't exactly understand feelings a whole lot at that time, but at the same time, uh, it's it's all, uh, especially in my early childhood, uh, I never understood why that freaked people out. I thought everybody had perfect pitch. Uh, for me, it just comes as naturally as breathing. Uh, I'm able to just pull pitches out of the air just just like that. I, it's it's just like the alphabet. I don't I don't know how else to describe it, and I'm not trying to flex. It's just no, it's just absolutely how it's always been for me. But isn't that because that's that's where you. Th- you fly. I mean, you feel yeah. the, your, the joy and the whole, everything comes around. You're, and I don't know, you're, obviously you're a very sensitive guy, right? Yes, I'm very, very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and when we can do something that we love so much, it just brings so much joy and, and we're able to just let go. Am I right? Uh, absolutely. But yours is on a high level. Yeah. It's, and music's the only thing I've ever felt called truly to do in life. Um, I... In many ways, I feel like my life is like a Disney movie. Here I am. I am this child, <laughs> and I have a, I've had a dream, a lifelong dream to be a, yeah. a musician. It's it's like Coco, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you know, uh, apart from that, though, I had very supportive family. Yeah. So uh, I uh, that's just all I've I felt like I've actually been naturally good at. So let's go back to the bullying for a second. Because I got to tell you, um, I used to beat up bullies mm-hmm. when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't take it. If I saw anybody be bullied, I'd beat them up. Now, that you can say I'm a bully, but I just can't deal with that too well. I don't like that. Do you think that in schools there should be more understanding as far as teaching kids about bipolar autism so maybe if the kids understood it a little more they, there wouldn't be so much bullying absolutely and i also don't think it's just bullying too i think it's just being ignored i think that that's mm. that's a huge 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 thing and i think that's probably more common than than direct bullying yeah uh, is just 
uh, special ed kids or, or kids who, uh, you know, who are neurodivergent um, are often just ignored uh, because uh, people don't know how to treat them. Uh, they don't know how to interact with them. And so it's, it's my goal um, as, as, you know, with my new found platform to be able to d uh, discuss um, uh, work, create workshops, if you will, uh, on how to uh, better interact with people on the spectrum. So uh, I have a goal, uh, apart from being a touring professional singer-songwriter, I want to I tour and do youth motivational speaking at schools, yeah. uh, not just to tell my story and be all inspirational and whatnot, but, but to uh, provide kids with the resources and the tools they need to interact with people on the spectrum or people who are special ed or people who are neurodivergent. And, um, uh proper uh properly and i've done that a couple times before i've uh i've spoken at a couple schools yeah and, and i say okay what would you do if there was somebody who did this or this is a typical uh this what this is a hypothetical scenario of something that an autistic person would do uh you know what would you do in this situation and and i've found that that has just been very very effective and i think a lot of kids you know uh you know it gives them the opportunity to, to th think critically about that um, about, you know, what, what will we do if we're in a situation like that? Oh my gosh, this is weird. Or I've never seen this before. How am I going to be proactive and, you know, help out my classmates? Yeah. Yeah. And so. I tell you what, if, if you did this for me. If you need me to talk to you, I'll, I'll do that for you. Yeah. If you ever need me to, if you want me to, um, I, you know, I was in high school and a friend of mine, um, was having a nervous breakdown. And we all ran away from him. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. It was scary. It was, he was talking about God. He was talking about, you know, this and this. So we just kind of were like, what's happening here? And, and what happens is, the way life works, karma. Three years later, I'm in a mental institution. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> if I had been taught or educated on what he had and w w what it really is, we could have been able to help him. Mm -hmm. And you learned the hard way. You learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. And don't think I didn't think about that when I was in the mental institution. Oh, of course. I, I can't imagine. You were probably thinking about that all the time. Yeah, yeah it wasn't cool. Cause um, it, yeah. yeah. So, oh, my God, Aiden, we're, we're going deep here, buddy. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> deep stuff, but it's stuff that needs to be talked about. I agree with I'm you. very happy and to talk about it. And the way... This, the, with my show, is this is what we sh con should continue to do is talk. Because somebody out there who has autism is going to watch this and say, you know what? Look at him. He's with Maurice and Bernard and where they're talking about things. And maybe I, I, I've been keeping it in too much. And I think that's not a good thing to hold anything in. Am yeah. I right? Yes. Absolutely. Oh my goodness! Now let me let me let me go to something else here. Well, that was beautiful. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so music, so that so when you when you write a song, do you hear the lyrics or the music? Do you what do you how do you when you when you're gonna write a song? Do you I've always gravitated toward the music itself over the lyrics. Uh, that's probably the most key aspect of, of songs for me uh, is the music itself. Um, so, you know, as far as how I approach writing a song, uh, I, I could start with the music and then do the lyrics or, or I could start with the lyrics and then do the music. You hear it in your head? Yeah, I, I, can hear, I can hear melodies in my head, but they always come when I don't try, when I don't actively sit down and try to write a song. Yeah, yeah. It'll come to me out of nowhere. Uh, oftentimes it'll come to me after hearing another song, uh, where I'll, you know, hear a completely other thing, but yeah. it's based off of that. And like, nobody would be able to know that it's based off of that song if I were to actually release it and arrange it, you know? So, you know, it's, it's all about remix. So, so in that, in that, in that way, uh, that, uh, helps. Uh, but I, I will say that, um, I, uh, it, it kind of just comes and goes in waves and it happens at random. So, uh, so yeah. And do you, do you, uh, get a piece of paper with a pen or you get a bit, uh, it's a tape recorder? I do a typical, uh, 
uh, modern singer songwriter thing of taking out my phone and going on voice memos and just going. <laughs> That's great. Scatting some melody. Yeah. You know, in public, uh, if, you know, if I'm I'm walking down the street, I'm just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if, if it's if it's not in my range, I'll I'll I'll. I'll I'll like I know myself well enough to know what note I wanted to sing but couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for that you know. Uh, and your mom's seems great. My mom is wonderful. Right. My mom is everything to me. Uh, she I I couldn't have asked for a better mom, better uh, support system, a you know better uh, support. You know, she's just everything. <laughs> yeah, it gives me gives me tears, man. Yeah. Um. Now what about what about movies with like where like the good doctor and rain man mm. do you think those are accurate portrayals or how do you feel about that i'm very glad you asked um i think that the spectrum of autism is so broad and everybody is different you've met one person on the spectrum you've met one person on the spectrum and that's a quote loosely adapted from dr stephen shore um and uh so i'm i don't know I mean, I personally think that that it's accurate, but at the same time, these are characters, you know, it's never, uh, you know, like uh, every experience of autism is so vastly different. Uh, I think that I think the good doctor is accurate. I think I see myself uh, in um, in autistic characters on television very well. I work with a lot of groups over here in L.A. uh, that cater to autistic artists and and I. Uh, through them, uh, I was able to, um, you know, uh, make things like this come to fruition. Wow. Uh, I'm absolutely grateful. It's all about networking. And, and that's I one know. thing I've learned <laughs> over here. You know, my social skills are getting put to the test. But um, so I was an extra on atypical. Uh, the Good Doctor, I think, is is really great, too, because in many ways, I think, in many ways, I see myself in autistic characters on television but at the same time, the good doctor definitely uh, represents a trope of a certain kind of uh, savantism type of autism uh, that is very, very, very rare. And, oh, it is? Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, uh, being a sort of, you know, savant or, or a prodigy that where it comes from autism uh, is, is actually very, very rare uh, in people with autism. And it's so commonly done in so many movies. For I, example, the first one was Rain Man. Rain Man, yeah. Uh, and then there's things like The Good Doctor. And, you know, it's definitely, I guess, more interesting to make a movie out of Savantism, I suppose. But, yeah, right. Uh, but uh, uh, but I do think it is it is a good portrayal. But I definitely am in a huge supporter of having people on the spectrum play roles of people on the spectrum. Because uh, lived experience brings... Uh, true authenticity to the table. Uh, so I, I definitely think representation could be better, although I am uh, happy with it in many ways. Uh, I'm not happy with uh, things like Sia's music <laughs> uh, that, uh. Uh, and, and, and a few other things, but, but overall I think we're headed in the right direction as far as how autism is portrayed in the media. And I, I would definitely love to uh, play some, somebody uh, with higher support needs because I do enjoy acting as well. Oh, you do? Uh, so, um, and the cool thing about that is, you know, I, all, all I can do if, you know, if I play someone with higher support needs is, is to just unmask more. So, yeah, you know, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you, do you. do you wish that there, there were more uh, actors with autism playing those roles as opposed to Dustin Hop? I mean, he did win an Oscar. Yeah. But... Um, you kind of answered that question. I mean, I've been playing a character on General Hospital for 30 years, and he's bipolar. I'm bipolar. Oh. The problem is, I, I asked, I, somebody asked me this question today. It's great for acting for me, and I'm a yeah. method actor. Yeah. So I get in there, and I'm bipolar. He's bipolar. I go through these mental illness uh, scenes, and cr yeah. I've been doing it for 30 years. The problem is, my life somewhat suffers. Yeah. Because... Right, but I've managed. I think now after twenty eight years, to figure it out. Yeah, but boy, the first fifteen twenty years, it was just killing my. You know, it's like rah, 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 rah. yeah, and 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 that and I have kudos and major kudos for that. But uh, I, acting is something I'd probably want to do on the side for for myself. I'd say. Yeah, it's it's a 
It's a tough thing, but uh, it's also re- I think music is better, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think so, too, but I'm not the person to ask. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I want to get into American Idol, just what you've done with the audition and what I saw. Mm -hmm. Here's what I saw. I saw... I'm going to get emotional. Just because you got me emotional watching you on that thing. I saw a mother who my mother, too, believed in me and in, in my talent and everything. And it was like, when you have that, it's very important starting out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and she was there in that story I saw. That's all I can judge by is that story. And when you got, well, they told the story about you and Coldplay, which I thought was cool. And you, you're, you, it's hard for you to deal with noise. Is that... The, uh, sudden loud noises I've always struggled with. I have a definitely hypersensitive hearing, um, but especially if it's sudden, that's where it, when it really gets me because I cannot shake off the adrenaline and then everything is f- uh, five to ten times louder what? after the sudden uh, uh, impact. So um, you hear the noise and then all of a sudden... You, it, it... And then everything is, is louder. Oh, everything's louder. Yeah, uh-huh. So, and, and that will come off from a sudden loud noise. Now, I, 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 even in general, even if it's super loud and it's not sudden, I, you know, I, I find, you know, I have to listen to, if I listen to music with headphones, I'm usually going about a quarter of the way up, uh, you know, but, but if it's like a concert, which I go to very regularly now, uh, you know, which I kind of overcame my fear of, and just now I go there regularly, Good. uh, Seeing one tomorrow, actually, with uh, Alejandro Aranda. Oh, that's my favorite American Idol. Uh, He's great. So I'm seeing his concert tomorrow. Uh, But but as far as like concert atmospheres and like even still, I have to wear earplugs just at moments when most people don't. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people are wearing earplugs at concerts, but even in just in other environments too. You know. But you overcame. That's beautiful. But I did overcome a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, I continue to overcome a lot of it. I had I had a scare recently where uh, my job was kind of on the line because of my uh, uh, inabil- my my potential for an inability to function after a fire alarm goes off. And, and as a teacher, I have a role to, to get the students out yeah. to safety. Yeah. Uh, but, but the thing is, I have a history of that of sudden fire alarms incapacitating me. Uh, so that was a scare. So I did a lot of practice with fire alarms uh recently and that was rough but but i think i can i can do it yeah Um, it it was it was it was so rough because i you know i I would do anything for these students but but you know uh, i you know and it's not just that i don't like the fire alarm you know a lot of people think oh no 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 i get yeah i can't handle it And, and, and so uh i was able to get myself at a point with serious practice uh one weekend uh to just listen to the fire alarm all of a sudden practice it uh in the middle of teaching uh simulate it as much as possible turn the volume on my speakers really loud and just have it go off and simulate it and i was able to finally get to a point where i could have my take my stu- guide my students out to the lines where they line up uh, and then subsequently i could go have my meltdown and oh. have someone else take over. Uh, so fr- from there, but as a, as a teacher, I, no matter what, I have to be able to do that. That's the biggest priority is being able to to lead my students out to the to the lines and, and then fulfill those basic tasks. But if I ever need somebody to step in for me uh, because I start to become incapacitated over time, it's a lot easier to do that after I have led the students to stay sure. safety first and done all these other things. Yeah, I mean, I, I got off two planes because of anxiety, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember Dr. Drew saying to me, uh, I said, how do, how do I get rid of this? I can't get on a plane. It's 10 years since I've flown. Mm-hmm. You got to keep getting on. Yeah. Keep getting on. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Increments. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Um, so, I'm going to conclude this by saying, when I watched Aiden, I knew, that just like... Uh, Name Luke Bryan. What was it? He said, "When I heard you, when I heard the piano, I said, I got, 
I got, I felt a lot. And I'm like, oh boy. Because it was almost like Billy Joel, right? And I was like, this is beyond good piano playing. This is like, bam. And then you sang, and your words were, were just, I related to them so well. And you gave me a kind of, like a Freddie Mercury kind of, because you would hit the note high, and then you'd stop. And then you'd go, boom. And I thought, man, this guy is, is just, I don't want to swear, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was just beautiful. And and to be honest with you, I couldn't believe there even, I don't know who it was, should we, should, there's no should we. Should. I told my wife, I said, yes, put mm -hmm. him through right now. Are you crazy? Yeah. You know, because Katy Perry said all that she would roll the dice on me. Right, yeah. I'm like, what do you need? I mean, this is like, <laughs> I, I I will say though that I did understand her critique very you did? well, and I and I did under understand Luke Bryan's critique very well. Uh, I definitely took all that to heart, so I'm very excited for you guys to see Hollywood Week. Oh, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Um. Thank you for I, I I just love you, man. This has been well. I really appreciate you having me, and this is very important stuff to talk about. So the fact that you are here giving me this platform as well just means a lot. I uh, really really appreciate this chat. Thank you very much yeah, for having me. Thank you for being here, and it's yeah, just been been easy and cool, and I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. State of mind. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> cool. That was cool, brother.